a lot of inspiration for my work comes from nature. And I really wanted to show you these examples, where this eagle is able to see through water, spot the fish, and plan its path such that it can grasp it while they're both in motion. Or this example here, where you have a flock of birds, a flock of starlings, navigating in space in seemingly perfect coordination, creating these beautiful formations without actually crashing into each other. So the question is, what kind of capabilities is it that we need in terms of perception and situational awareness to equip our robots such that they can navigate in the world around us autonomously and also interact with the environment? So I've taken this um, problem and I've broken it down into three distinct challenges that we're aiming to address. Firstly, we need to provide our robots with a sense of where they are in space and what a map of their surroundings uh, looks like. Then, building on top of that, a level of intelligence, we want to have richer scene representations such that our robots are able to interact with the scene, to reach out and grasp an object, for example. And finally, uh, we want to exploit the potential presence of multiple intelligent agents in the scene and have them collaborating in a team. Which brings me to the vision of what we would like to do in the lab. We would like to have a team of robots, let's say drones, that they are equipped with sensors, let's say cameras. And we want to develop their visual perception and intelligence that will enable them to navigate autonomously in space as individuals, first of all, before collaborating in a team to perform a common task together. For example, to build a map of their surroundings. But in order to achieve this vision, we actually have to address these challenges, which also correspond to the main research directions in my lab. So I'm going to go through them, and I'm going to show you some of our recent results and current challenges that we're faced with. So firstly, we need to talk about how we can track the motion of a robot while it is moving. So you might say, you know, I know how to do that. I'm going to just strap a phone on it, switch my GPS localization on, and let the navigator track the position of the phone, and hence the robot, inside the map. So it requires that we have a good GPS signal, a map of the environment, and then that sums up your solution. Now, are we relying on any unrealistic assumptions? Well, indoors, here, GPS signal doesn't work, right? And also, outdoors is not that reliable in narrow streets, so that's out. Then, how about the map? Well, new buildings get erected, old buildings, hopefully old buildings, get demolished, new streets get built, so we cannot really rely on a pre-built map. So in computer vision and robotics, we do this, we try and estimate the position of the robot and what the environment looks like at the same time using onboard sensors, like a camera. So we humans are pretty good at understanding roughly how the camera has been moving in order to capture a video like this. So the question is, how can we make the robot understand how the camera has been moving just by looking at that video? Well, the way we do it is that we pick natural scene features to serve as landmarks, like the square patches that you see here. And judging how these features move from one image to the next, we start reasoning about how the camera has been moving in order to capture a video like this. So this video was captured with handheld camera, but it's exactly the same principles that we use later on to showcase that it is possible to automate the flight of a small aircraft this big using one onboard camera and an inertial sensor. So you'll see in a second that the kind of maps we're building are very different from Google Maps. They're actually point cloud maps. And the system is also estimating the camera pose while forgetting past camera poses. Why? Because the onboard capabilities, the onboard resources of the drone are limited. So in order to be able to process new data in a timely manner, sometimes we need to forget about past experiences. So um, this system, uh, it was open source, so we released it to the public, and it was also the basis of many systems that came after it. But I have to say that in order to capture a video like this, a pretty video like this, there needed to be a lot of hand-tuning in advance, which means that we haven't actually um, achieved true autonomy yet. Why? Well, one of the problems is that 
when you're perceiving the world through a camera lens, um, you're prone to illumination changes and seasonal changes. So we've been working on algorithms to robustify place recognition, to really teach our robots to understand when they're coming back to a location where they have been to before. And here are results from a system like this, which, when it's given a query image, is trying to find a matching image from a database, return a matching image from a database if it exists, despite the fact that it might have been captured at a different time of day or a different season. So how do we achieve this? Well, we train our system with lots and lots and lots of examples of pairs of images of the same location taken in February and in June. So the system really learns what makes a place distinctive with respect to other places, but also what changes in the scene are transient, such that um, the system can suppress them when deciding whether uh, the query image corresponds to something that the robot has seen before. So once we have a basic point cloud map of uh, the environment, the question then is how can we build richer scene representations such that our robots can interact with the scene to reach out and grasp an object or to avoid obstacles while flying? So how useful would it be if we had drones that are intelligent enough to override the pilot's commands in cases where he or she is driving it into a wall? Something like semi-autonomous driving, but for drones. So here is an example where um, the drone is densifying the very local surroundings of the camera, which can later on be used to really avoid obstacles and really complete the loop of navigation, such as in, in this example here. So the drone takes off and it knows nothing about the scene, and we give it a goal position outside the slide, on the right-hand side, outside the slide. So that goal position acts like a magnet, so the drone really just wants to arrive at the goal. But as it perceives new parts of the scene, it starts understanding that there are obstacles in the way, so it needs to constantly replan its path such that it can avoid these obstacles and still reach the goal. Which brings me to the final challenge of how can we have multiple robots collaborating with each other. Now, I mentioned before that drones have limited resources on board, and sometimes when they are exploring um, uh, for a long time some scene, then they need to forget about past experiences. So in order to combat this and also help robots collaborate with each other, in one of our works we are introducing a central server. That can be a laptop, as in this case, or it can be the cloud, if you'd like. So as the drones take off, they know nothing about the scene, and they know nothing about the rest of the fleet, each other. So they start building a map of their surroundings, trying to estimate where their current pose is with respect to that map. But before forgetting any of their experiences, they send them down to the server. So the server acts like a bookkeeping entity, taking information from everyone, and because it's also a central server, it can sit on the ground, it can have um, stronger computational capabilities. So it can do things like identifying overlap between maps, merge maps, and also send any information back to the agents. For example, send portions of the map that are relevant to this drone here that another drone has mapped in the past. So this system really brings the basis for any collaboration that can happen on top of that. For example, to share the load of an object to be transported. So with these three challenges, we are aiming to teach robots to see and collaborate, because I believe these are key capabilities in pushing for further progress in robotic autonomy today. And you might ask, so what are the applications of this technology? Well, the possibilities are endless. Whether ones want to digitize an archaeological structure, to have a robotic team to help in search and rescue or crop monitoring, then computer vision and robotics have a lot to offer and can have a great impact. I did spend most of my talk talking about drones because they pose some of the most difficult challenges for robotic perception. Because they have limited resources on board, they move in 3D, they're very agile, they're very fast. So we argue that it is these same principles. So if we manage to do this for drones, we can use the same principles on other kinds of platforms. For example, to automate train navigation, or to bring robots in the construction site, or even to have multiplayer games using our phones. And I leave you with this thought. As robots become more and more autonomous, they promise to transform our lives. This transformation can be marvelous, 
but we need to continue understanding it and continue guiding its path to this end. Thank you very much.